Welcome back to another weekly walkthrough, an MSC podcast production by Alex and Graham. Thank you guys for joining this week. I'm Alex, your host. Joining me as always, it's Graham. Graham, welcome back. Wow. I mean, another weekly walkthrough. We're in our shorts. The shoulder pads are off. We're just having fun here today and ready to talk some, uh, not Maction yet, but future Maction. <laughs> Gotta love future Maction, as everybody should know, unless you've been living under a rock until about 10 minutes ago. UMass will be joining the Mid-American Conference starting 2025 as a full member institution, bringing the Mighty Mac to 13 members. And they've kind of done a preview of the Mac. I think this season they're going to play five Mac teams in non-conference play to kind of wet their whistle a little bit on uh, what conference competition will look like starting 2025. Well, and they picked a, a good selection of them. They they were going through kind of the top of the MAC this year, starting with the uh, the Eastern Michigan Eagles, moving on to the Toledo Rockets, the Buffalo Bulls. Um, last week against uh, against Miami Red Hawks, and then this week against the uh, the Northern Illinois Huskies. Uh, we're we're talking about a who's who of the uh, the Mid American Conference, and uh, and really they've got their work cut out for them based on the results. I'll tell you, I mean, they've been 0-4, but I've been a little bit impressed with them. They, they didn't look great against in against Eastern in that opening game, but they came out, and I was pretty impressed with them against Miami, who has arguably the most stout defense in the Mid-American Conference. They forced an overtime game, lost that in overtime. Miami pulled out the win 23-20 a week ago, but I got to say, as I've seen UMass kind of play, I've been a little bit more impressed with them each week. I have not been. <laughs> you're, you're, you're right. This uh, this Miami, uh, you know, very near victory, overtime loss to uh, to the Red Hawks last week um, is kind of the the closest they've come to to really being victorious in the Mid American Conference. But uh, they're not. They're still not victorious in the Mid American Conference. And and I think we all know that Miami is less than we thought they were. You're coming mm -hmm. into this season, uh, a lot of us, you know, me included, had Miami picked as as the front runner to win the conference this year, and they're just not that team. Their defense is is stout, but who knows how stout it actually is? Uh, mm -hmm. This Miami team, I don't think, is as good as we gave them credit for, and uh, and despite the, uh, the the Minutemen, the UMass Minutemen coming up close against them. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not impressed. The, the most impressive game I've seen from UMass this year is the Toledo game actually. Okay. Yeah. And that was again, another loss for the Minutemen, but they, I mean, they controlled possession in that game for a vast majority of that game, uh, gave Toledo quite a scare at home before Toledo went on the road to Mississippi state, but time of possession. I mean, they were able to hold onto the ball, something teams don't do against the Rockets. Yeah. And they, and and they made the most of it. They, you know, they they didn't score as much as they would like to. Obviously, they they lost by fifteen in that game, but they really they walked away with the what looked like a competitive match against a Toledo team that looks like the you know one of the teams at the top of the conference. Sure, and and I think that's what we're going to see from UMass this week coming into this Northern Illinois game. Northern Illinois, who I'll be honest, I've scratched my head on this team. They are one of the best defensive teams in the country, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. But then on the other side, I see this offense who is arguably one, I think they're number 87 in the country in total scoring offense, not a great offense. And I just, th this is where I think this game is going to get interesting. What strength versus what strength, what weakness versus what weakness. So let's just dive into it. Why don't you talk to me about this UMass defense? We can uh, we can talk about the UMass defense. Uh, both of these teams, the the Huskies and the Minutemen, um, both way better on defense than they are on offense. Um, the UMass defense this year has been good, not great. They're allowing uh, 308 yards per game, uh, only 187 passing yards, a buck 20 on the ground, uh, but they are allowing 30 points through the air, 30.8, so almost 31 points. Um, uh, per game allowed by the Minutemen. And that's that's concerning uh, for mm -hmm. a Northern Illinois team that uh, that scores only 27 points per game. So uh, this Minutemen defense is the better unit uh, on the on the field. But I think the real story here, you talked about a little bit uh, about the Rockets when when 
you know, Massachusetts played them, it was the time of possession. And, and UMass just controls the clock. They hold mm -hmm. on to the ball. They don't give it back. And, and really, that's been the story this year is that the UMass – doesn't let the other team have the ball. And what does that translate to? It translates to a good defense that's maybe not so much about the defense, but about the offense. Um, and, th and that's what happens when you have two units, you know, the offense and the defense, both playing defense, your defense looks pretty good. Uh, let's, let's not talk about this offense. This off offense is pretty abysmal. But uh, but the UMass defense and, and really controlling the ball and controlling that clock, it might work out for them. It puts them in games where they went up against the Toledo team where they were wholly outmatched and they still played that game pretty close. They played Miami pretty close last week, took it to overtime, only lost by a field goal. That's another story of time of possession there. I think this UMass team is just weird enough. They might pull out a victory against the Huskies. So looking at Northern Illinois on offense, Again, they, they rank towards the bottom of the country in terms of scoring 87th in the country. And people are going to be quick to point out, well, they played Notre Dame. They played NC State, both who are power four opponents, which I'll give you that. But a bulk of their scoring came against the Western Illinois football team in week one. That's when they dropped it was plus 40 points in that game. And I think that is translated to what they've done the rest of the year. I've been concerned about what Ethan Hampton has done. I think he's still the guy who can lead this team and they can be successful, especially because they have such a stout defense. But I think this is where UMass has a big opportunity to take this game. Ethan Hampton has struggled to hold onto the ball. Just last week, Ethan Hampton gave up two fumbles that resulted in 14 points for NC State. The Huskies lost by seven in Raleigh. And that's kind of the the opposite side of of the ball for uh for the for the Minutemen here. They're one of only twelve FBS teams this season who haven't lost a single fumble uh, so far. And and that kind of speaks to the way the uh, these the UMass controls the ball and, and they control the the time of possession. Um, now, what we would like to see a team who's who really cares about ball security, we'd like to see a defense that's a bunch of ball hawks. But the UMass defense only has two takeaways this year, uh, and yeah. so that if you could if you could pair the the ball security with a defense that's so greedy they take away that ball, uh, we might have something to say here. Uh, unfortunately, UMass has two interceptions on the year. Uh, you know, we talk about uh, Teray Powell leads the team with twenty four tackles, and and that's great. It's tough to see that from a defensive back. And, and that's, you know, we, we look to see a, a linebacker or even a defensive lineman lead the team in tackles. When you have a DB leading the team in tackles, it says something about a defense that lets opponents get through that, uh, that tackle box into the secondary. And I think that's concerning. Also, leading the team in tackles for loss, we, who would we expect this to be? A, a linebacker, an edge rusher, a, a defensive lineman? This is also a DB for, for UMass, uh, Arshin Giles. You know, I got to talk about the Giles on the team. Uh, leads the team with 2.5 tackles for loss. This UMass defense is pretty okay when we, when we compare it to other defenses across the FBS. And somehow they're not doing what defenses do. It, this whole team is weird to me, Alex. It's weird. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, that's... Uh... It seems like that's going to be strength versus per potential weakness. Uh, Northern Illinois, Ethan Hampton's passing for 220 yards a game, uh, and he's averaging about 1.7, 1.75 touchdowns per contest, but he's averaging almost at least one interception a game as well. He's thrown three on the year just to seven touchdowns. So for me, I think if if you're Northern Illinois, you, you rely on the ones who have gotten you there. You rely on Ontario Brown, who's got 355 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. He's averaging almost 100 yards a game. He's averaging actually 88 yards a game. But then Gavin Williams, I mean, that's a two-headed monster in that backfield. He's got a buck 82, and he's got 45 yards per contest. If you can continue to establish this ground game and use that, I think that takes a lot of pressure off of Ethan Hampton. But then when Ethan Hampton is throwing, he's got great targets as well. 
Trayvon Rudolph. He's got seven catches for 120 yards. He's got a score. Ontario Brown, we're going to be mentioning him a lot today. He's got eight catches for 205 yards. He's got two scores through the air. And then Grayson Barnes, their stellar tight end. He's got 11 catches, a buck 41, another score. This is not a fast-paced, high-powered scoring offense, but similar to what UMass does, they're able to just kind of control things, keep things rolling until disaster strikes. But their defense has been so good this year, they're able to stay in every single game. The two losses have been by a touchdown or less. An over, or a, yeah, a loss to Buffalo by three, and then a loss to NC State on the road by seven a week ago. And and I think that's the story here is this this NIU defense is excellent. Um, I, I, they're ranked number one or number two in the MAC in a lot of categories. I'll let you get to that uh, exactly what categories those are. Um, what's interesting that I found is is when we look at the S and P plus ratings from ESPN, uh, we have NIU way leading the way on on defense. We we have the mm-hmm. NIU defense ranked 38th in the country compared to UMass's 111th. And I'll remind you, there's only 134 teams in the FBS. Uh, so 111th is you not sure about great. That? Um, but uh, what's interesting here, the NIU offense, 127th, not very good at all compared to the UMass offense, 115th. So we've mm-hmm. got a UMass offense that's, that's somehow ranking ahead of the NIU offense and these S- the S and P plus rankings. Um, but when we look at it in terms of points per game, they're worse total yards per game, worse total passing yards per game, rushing yards per game. Uh, the, uh, the minute men are worse there. S and P plus gives credit for the, the opponents that, uh, that UMass has played. It's interesting to me that UMass seems to be getting credit for the opponents they played, including Eastern Michigan, Toledo, Buffalo, Miami, and Central Connecticut, um, whereas NIU is somehow taking <laughs> harm from their opponents, including Notre Dame and NC State. Uh, so this is a uh, an interesting take here uh, in terms of S&P Plus. Look, uh, this Miniman offense is, is really nothing to write home about. Um, it, the best thing I can say about uh, UMass's offense is that they've got a quarterback with a with a hard to pronounce name. Uh, Tyson Pumachin is the uh, is the name of the uh, the quarterback there at uh, at UMass. His name is spelled so weird. I, I want you to guess it. If you're at home right now listening or watching the podcast, I want you to guess how to spell this guy's name because you're 100 percent wrong. Um, <laughs> Tyson Pumachin has. Uh, Against Miami last week, he was 9 for 22 on passing for 173 yards and a touchdown. That's not great, Alex. 9 for 22 is not great. That's not what we look for. Um, the uh, He was the leading rusher, though, for the Minutemen with 80 yards on the ground, uh, eight on 18 carries. He, he is the leading rusher on the season for this UMass team, uh, as well as their leading passer, he leads the team in rushing with 226 yards and passing with 1,017 yards. Um, 226, not so bad for a quarterback, but scary numbers when you talk about you don't have a running back who is who is over that. Considering mm-hmm. UMass has played five games, we also know the way they're controlling time of possession, they're controlling the ball. Uh, this, this stat is wild to me that uh, we've got a quarterback leading the rushing efforts for this team he only has 226 yards. So something going on with this UMass team where they are really controlling time of possession despite not great numbers from the old team from the team in general. Uh, now, graduate student wide receiver Jacoby Keeney James has played 5 games. He's caught 20 passes for 406 yards, 3 touchdowns. This is a bright spot on this Minutemen offense. And and Alex, uh, you know, kind of spoiler alert. If the uh, if the Minutemen want to win this game, we're going to have to see that connection between Pumachin and Keeney James. We're going to have to see that exploited a lot against this NIU defense, and uh, I think that's going to be tough. Why is that going to be so tough with this uh, Husky defense, Alex? Well, you you mentioned it earlier. Uh, Northern Illinois ranks one or two in pretty much most statistical categories defensively in the Mid-American Conference, including the number one pass defense in the conference. Uh, Miami is number two. 
uh, to your point about Pumachin. Uh, we've got Northern Illinois sitting at first in rush defense. They're allowing just under 90 yards per contest. And then they've got, oh, look at this, second in uh, scoring defense. And it's actually tied for first with the aforementioned Toledo Rockets at 19 points a game. And then in total defense, they're only giving up 235 yards a contest. So this is a tough task. And 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 for for additional clarification, talking about Miami and talking about these other MAC teams that they've played, the next closest team to Northern Illinois in terms of total yards has been Toledo, who has given up 340 yards a game. So Toledo's given up only about five more yards a contest. But then it goes down from there. Eastern Michigan at 365. Um, and then you've got uh, Buffalo sitting at 366, and then you've got Miami 375. So this, I mean, defensively, this is a pretty stout Northern Illinois team, including guys who are leading the team in tackles. Jaden Dolphin, he has 23 tackles. That's good for almost six a contest. Christian Furman, 22, good for five and a half a contest. Uh, Nevaeh Sanders leads this team in sacks. He is great at getting into the backfield. He has three sacks on the year, tied for first in the Mid-American Conference. Pass deflections, don't try to throw on Jacob Finley. This guy has four pass breakups, and he is, again, tied for top three in the Mid-American Conference. He's averaging one big one a game. They don't throw his way very often. It seems like it's for a pretty good reason. Well, four, it sounds like... Uh, I'm not done yet. This is a good defense. You're, You're going to let me finish this. <laughs> They've got four forced fumbles on the year. From Devontae O'Malley, Santana Banner, Nevea Sanders, Pierce Opong. And yes, it's I, I believe it's Opong. It might be pronounced Upong. I, again, I apologize, Pierce, if I got that wrong. Please don't uh, send me anything. Uh, no hate mail, please. But uh, four combined fumbles. All of them have one on the year. This is a team that loves to get into the backfield, loves to cause chaos, and that is why they've been successful against Notre Dame. That's why they were pretty successful against NC State. This is a defense that is going to be this is a this is a MAC championship caliber defense. They don't have a lot of guys who are out there making incredible big plays, but this is a defense that is they're working together. And this is this is a Thomas Hammock defense. This is a defense that's going to go out. They're going to play consistently. They're going to play as a unit. It's not about let's make this one superstar look great. It's let's go out and let's suffocate these opponents. And they've done that to 19 points a game. I think that's the big stat you have to circle. And it certainly sounds like the, the Minutemen are, are in trouble here. What I'm going to point out again, Don Brown, uh, this is his eighth year at, Dr. Uh, at, UMA at UMass. He is a, uh, a 48 and 43 overall record. And, and we, we talk about UMass every year as this team who is, it was a bottom dweller in, uh, in all of FBS football. But he has an overall winning record here uh, with the UMass Minutemen. And this is a team who sometimes, not often, but sometimes finds a way to win. And uh, and they're a weird team. They're a team who doesn't fumble. They're a team who tends not to throw interceptions. They're a team who takes care of the ball. They're a team who milks the clock. And they're a team who plays a, a defense that's weird. Everything about this team is a little bit weird, uh, and I think it might be too much for the Huskies to handle. Alex, I, that's that's what I'm pleading here. UMass walks away with a victory today. They get they bank their first MAC victory before they actually enter the conference, and uh, and they get it against a team who we all thought in week two was going to be the the class of the MAC, um, and and they get it on the back of their weirdness. This is going to be all about weird. It's going to be all about time of possession, not giving up the ball, playing a defense that's a little bit weird, and walking away from this with uh, Northern Illinois going. Northern Illinois going. I, I have no idea how the Minutemen won this game. They just did. Well, I'll tell you this, Graham. It's if you're a Northern Illinois fan, a, a good news for you: you didn't beat NC State last week. No boneyard victory. Coach Hammock is relatively awful <laughs> after boneyard victories. He's something like five and uh or he's he's yeah five and like eight after boneyard victories. Like it's he's not great after boneyard victories. So 
if you're a Northern Illinois fan, you've got that to look forward to. Yeah, you lost, but you're not going to have that hangover like they like. I feel like Northern Illinois had after the Notre Dame game. This is a big one for Northern Illinois. This is a, I think, a bigger one for UMass. I'm getting weird vibes just kind of looking at some of these numbers. It's going to be UMass defense versus a a one dimensional Northern Illinois offense, but then it's going to be this stout Northern Illinois offense versus this. What is this UMass offense? You know, so I think it's going to be very interesting to see. Graham, do you have any score predictions for this one? No, I have no score predictions. The the minimum, the minimum are going to walk away victorious. I have no idea how this is going to play out. Let me run you through UMass's scores so far this year. They lost twenty-eight to fourteen to Eastern Michigan. They lost thirty-eight to twenty-three to the Toledo Rockets. Then they went up against the Buffalo Bulls, a team who we think has a, a not as good a defense as the Toledo Rockets. They only managed to score three there in a thirty-four to three loss. Uh, then they beat Central Connecticut 35 to 31, a team who not very good. Still, they managed to put up put up 35 points on them uh, last week against Miami, 23 to 20. Uh, I can't tell you how this how this offense is going to do. I don't know if this is a three point offense or a 30 point offense. I can't really tell you how this defense is going to do. I don't know if this is a 23 point defense or a 38 point defense. I guess those aren't those aren't so big differences um (laughs) (laughs) but the uh it's a weird team it's a weird team they embrace the weird i don't have a score prediction for you but i know the Minutemen are going to fight until that last minute and uh the uh i think they walk away victorious here (laughs) well let's uh i like i like northern illinois in this one for all the reasons i mentioned and because i think that they're going to turn it around this is a good opportunity for them this is still a great northern illinois team Um, one that has now been etched into history and into lore of Northern Illinois football. Speaking of guys like Joe Novak, who are just icons in this, in the, in the history, Thomas Hammock is writing some of his own chapters in this, which is awesome, especially as an alumni. I like the Huskies. Huskies are at home. This is a big contest for NIU at home. I like NIU at home. I'm not giving a score prediction either. Um, I know what I think the score will be, but we're going to go we're going to go score prediction less on this week's episode. Um, Graham, before we move on to the next segment, do you have any other words on this matchup? I I think we see a, a UMass victory here and uh, welcome to the conference, UMass. There it is. All right. Before we so now we're going to transition into our college football schedule. Speaking of schedules. Have you guys taken the time to download the Varsity Podcast Network app uh, available from Learfield? It's for free. Schedule time to download that this week before this weekend's games kick off. It is free to download on the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. You can listen to hundreds of podcast episodes such as yours truly. I know who wants to listen to this. And then you can also listen to hundreds upon hundreds of live audio broadcasts of your favorite college teams every single week. You want to listen to the Toledo Rockets? This weekend against Miami, you can download the app and listen to the guys making the call. You want to listen to Ball State? You can download and listen on this app. It's available for free, on the go. Download it today. You won't regret it. I love this app. You can save your favorite teams and your favorite podcast. The accounts are free. Free to listen, free to stream, free to download. Definitely worth having the Varsity Network app. Gotta love that Varsity Network app. I do. And uh, so let's move on to the Mac college football slate this week. Aside from this Northern Illinois game, we just have three games and they're all conference games. So six teams in action, uh, seven if you count Northern Illinois, but three conference games going on. And uh, so we've got UMass at Northern Illinois at noon over at Husky Stadium and DeKalb. Northern Illinois by 17 and a half. I like Northern Illinois to win, but I don't have a spread prediction. We'll move on to Western Michigan at Ball State, 2 o'clock on ESPN+. Plus. Schumann Stadium in Muncie, Indiana. Line, Western Michigan, 10 and a half. Graham? I think the Broncos are better than the Cardinals this year. Um, we're going to see Western Michigan win here at home. And uh, and, and, and I think they'll cover the spread as well. Uh, this, this is a, a Western Michigan victory. Uh, let's say, I don't know, 20 to 7. 20 to 7. 
Western Michigan gets it done and gallops out of Muncie with a victory. Miami, Ohio taking on the Toledo Rockets. This is their third meeting in the last 14 games after going 12 years, 11 years without playing each other. These teams have met up a lot, met in the MAC championship a year ago, met at the game down in Oxford last October. You and I were at that game. It was a great game, a 28-21 victory for the Rockets. The Rockets then Except for that Rick Gabbard it. injury. We didn't, well, didn't like the, I wasn't going like to talk about Gabbard. that. It wasn't That wasn't a great moment, but otherwise it was a great day. Uh, Rockets ended up losing the game in the MAC championship to Miami. What what do we got going on here? I mean, we've we've seen Miami, we've seen Toledo. Feel like we have a little slightly better idea. It looks like Toledo at home by six and a half there in the glass bowl in Toledo. What are your thoughts? Uh, you know, Alex, they say absence makes the heart grow fonder, and uh, these teams have had no absence uh, between each other. So I think there is going to be no love lost uh, between the uh, the Rockets and the Red Hawks. Um, Toledo's at home this weekend, and and that is uh, that makes all the difference here. Uh, this Miami team knows the Rockets inside and out. The Rockets know the Red Hawks inside and out. Uh, and it's going to come down to the fact that Toledo is at home. Toledo has a little more talent this year. Uh, these Red Hawks, especially the defense, very disciplined, very experienced. Uh, but Toledo walks away with this one. Um, uh, let's say this one goes 31-23. 31 23. That game is at 3 30 on ESPN Plus. Last game of the day, 3 30 on ESPN Plus. Bowling Green at Akron. Akron, who was awful under the Tom Arth era, won two games off of Bowling Green. Bowling Green last year did take down the Zips at home in pretty dominant fashion. Bowling Green on the road. It is Bowling Green by 16 and a half there at Infocision Stadium. Like, you could walk down and watch this game if you really wanted to, but. Graham, what's your prediction for this one? Uh, you know, this is an interesting one because we have Bowling Green sitting at one and three, the Akron Zips sitting at one and four. Uh, if you just saw that, you might think two MAC teams with only one victory apiece so far in the season, these are evenly matched teams. But if you've watched any of Bowling Green's games, this is a talented team who has run up against some tough opponents. Uh, Bowling Green walks away with this one easy. I would be surprised if the if the Zips get a get a touchdown here. Uh, I think this one is is something like twenty eight to six uh, in favor of the Falcons. You guys heard it here first. If you're placing bets, don't listen to us. We might occasionally pretend like we know what we're talking about, but looking at our uh, spread the last couple of weeks, uh, we we might be a little off base. Graham, do you have any other uh, thoughts, opinions? comments, concerns, complaints uh, for the audience at home before we bounce out of here? Yes. Feel, feel free to uh, make those public. No. You guys heard it here first. He has complaints, but he won't share them. Um, that's going to do it for us today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to continue this segment all football season long, so please, please, please continue to listen. Support the podcast. You can follow us over on Twitter at the MSC Podcast. On YouTube, where you might be watching this, at MSC Podcast. TikTok and Instagram, also at the MSC Podcast. And on Facebook, for you folks who don't like the other social media outlets, at the Max Sports Connection Podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week.